Okay, since Telnet is an insecure way of remotely connecting to the router, um, the reason is that if you Telnet from PCA into the router, your password, your username and password are sent in clear text to the router. And if someone was to jump on this switch here and let's say try to filter packets, um, like a man in the middle attack, and they were able to capture those packets of you telnetting into R1, they would be able to see your username and password, and now they'd have an administrative password to get into R1. So a better way to do it is to use SSH, or Secure Shell, to secure shell from PCA into R1. And that's what we're going to do now, is we'll set that up on the router. And in order to do that, we have to set up a few things here. So I'm just going to hit Enter a few times here. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is to set up the domain name for the network. So we'll say in global config mode, conf t, short for configure terminal, we will say IP domain dash name, and then domain name. And then in the lab, it tells you to use CCNA uh, security, which is basically the name of the course, dot com. Okay, and that sets the domain name, right? We already have a host name on the router, which is R1, which we would have needed, um, but it's already been set. Host name has been set to R1, right? Host name R1, right? Okay, done. So now, and now what we'll do is we're going to set up a special user for this um, high level login. So we'll say, username, and once again I'm just following the curriculum here, username admin, and not only that we can set up a privilege level for the user, so we'll say privilege, right, privilege level 15, which is the highest, lever, highest privilege level you can give, username admin privilege level 15, and then a secret password, and I'm going to use, once again, just Cisco, which the curriculum wants you to use a 10-character one, but I'm just going to use Cisco, which is 5-character. So I'm kind of breaking the rules here a little bit. Okay. All right, so now we have a user called admin. Also, password is Cisco, but he's got privilege level 15, and it's a secret password, so it's um, MD5 encrypted. All right, now, to configure SSH. To configure SSH, we're going to go to line VTY, zero space four to get to our virtual um, terminal lines and we're gonna set a privilege level okay and I typed that incorrectly privilege level of 15 okay this will enable the user who logs in with the privilege level 15 to go right to enable mode or privileged mode all right, and then we'll say login local, which was actually already set. And then this next command will um, tell the line VTY to use SSH instead of Telnet. So what we'll do is we'll say transport input SSH. All right, if we put a question mark here, you see that there's choices, transport input and we could set our login, which is uh, Linux old protocol. SSH, there's Telnet, right? So SSH is the one we want. Okay, transport input SSH, and then we'll say exit. Okay, now that we've done that, we're still not done. We now need to generate our keys, uh, key pair for um, encryption, so encrypted key pair for logging into the router. So what we're going to do is, first thing, the, the, the best thing to do when you do this is to assume that there might have already been some keys made and to delete any previous keys that were already generated. So we'll say crypto key zero eyes, which is going to get rid of it, RSA encryption. So that will, no signature RSA keys found in the configuration. So we didn't have any keys, but it's good to check. If we did have some, we'd want to zero those out and create a new key pair. So we'll say now crypto key 
generate RSA general dash keys modulus of 1024. You could have done 2048, but it would take everything a lot longer. Hit enter. And it says the key modulus size is 1024 bits, generating the keys. Okay, and now it says here SSH5 enabled. SSH has been enabled. All right, great. So now that that's done, let's test it out. Let's take it for a test drive. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our PC here, PCA, click on it or just open the window, right? And you'll see that we click on this window here. If I try to Telnet into the router, Telnet failed, okay? Port 23 connection failed. Now before we could Telnet in, now we can't. Okay, interesting. So how are we going to secure shell into the router? Well, what we can do is we could use PuTTY or we could use this program right here, TerraTerm Pro. So we'll open up TerraTerm Pro and we'll say we want to get into 192.168.1.1 on SSH, which is notice port 22. Port 23 is Telnet. SSH is port 22. And we'll click OK. And we'll see if the connection works here. All right. It says, hey, we don't have these keys in the registry. Are you sure you trust these keys? And we'll say yes. OK. And log in. We'll say we'll log in as admin, which is our new user. Click OK. And then the password of admin, which was Cisco. Click OK. All right. And you can see that we get our banner message of the day, and it dropped us right into enable mode, privileged user mode. Right. So with that privilege level 15, we didn't have to go into user mode. We could go straight into privilege mode. All right, and that was it, right? We could do a show run, right? Yay, just like the other console. But this time we are uh, terminaled in, not consoled in, uh, terminaled in from a, a SSH connection from PCA into R1, right? We can, let's see if we can do a conf T to get to global config mode. We can. Okay, I'm going to do a control C and then an exit to exit out. All right, and now we are disconnected. Now, we want to probably do all these same things on R3, right? But right now, having just fun doing it on R1 and trying to help out with uh, the students that are new to this kind of NetLab and working with the NetLab and how to negotiate the PCs and the routers.